Hi, welcome to this course on becoming an AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. This course will give you the core concepts and knowledge that you need in order to give the CLF-C01 Cloud Practitioner exam and become certified with AWS. First, let's meet the team. Together, we have a great amount of experience in working with cloud technologies and cloud computing. We are all AWS certified, and you can be sure that we're going to give you the information and guidance that you need to pass the exam. So what even is the certification? The certification is a means of validating your knowledge and understanding of the AWS cloud. Having the certification is an asset because many companies look for people who have passed these certifications and makes those people better candidates overall for those roles. If your organization employs the services of the AWS cloud, then you could be in any position. The certification is still very useful for you. The certification is not only useful for people in IT specific roles. Business executives have just as much to gain from this certification as software engineers and specialists do. The certification itself is an asset and really boosts portfolio and CV for anybody who has taken it. Now let's take a look at the exam itself. The exam is going to be 90 minutes long and you're going to have to answer 65 questions. These questions will either be multiple choice, meaning you will have to pick the correct answer from a selection of answers or multiple response meaning that two or more answers could even be correct, and all the correct choices need to be selected. Giving the exam is going to cost you $100 American, and you can give the exam in languages other than English. To register for the exam, you can head over to this link on the left side of your screen. There you can schedule an exam and give it. You can also get more details pertaining to the exam from the official AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam guide that will be available at this link. So what can you expect in the exam? First, let's take a look at the domains that you're going to be tested from. These are cloud concepts, which will comprise 26% of the exam, security and compliance, which will comprise 25% of the exam, technology, which will make up a whopping 33% of the exam, and lastly, billing and pricing, which will account for 16% of your exam. There are two response types for the exam. The first one is the standard MCQ multiple choice question. That means that there is one correct answer and three or more wrong answers and you have to select the right one. The second response type is the multiple response, meaning that there may be two or three or maybe even more correct choices and you have to select all the correct answers to get the question right. Otherwise, the whole question is going to be marked wrong. Now let's take a look at the exam itself. The exam is going to be 90 minutes long and you're going to have to answer 65 questions. These questions will either be multiple choice, meaning you will have to pick the correct answer from a selection of answers, or multiple response, meaning that two or more answers could even be correct, and all the correct choices need to be selected. Giving the exam is going to cost you $100 American, and you can give the exam in languages other than English. There is no penalty if your answer is wrong. You simply do not receive the points for the question, which means it's safe to guess. You should review your answers before making a submission because submissions are irreversible. You do not need to pass in select domains. Only an overall pass of the entire exam is required to receive the certification. When it comes to exam strategy, the two-pass system is tried, tested, and true for many of our students. On the first pass, just answer the questions that you know you can answer correctly. On the second run-through, start running by process of elimination and seeing what remains. Always make sure to review your submission before handing it in and remember, your guesses are not going to be punished, you just won't be marked for incorrect answers. When going to actually give the exam, remember to take two forms of identifying documents as well as proof of exam registration. You can show registration on your phone, but your identification needs to be hard copies and solid. You won't be allowed to take personal belongings inside so you will have to leave those behind in a locker. In the exam, you will be allowed to use a scratch paper, but you will not be allowed to take it home or out of the exam hall.